All right, so I got a door from my mate Matt. Thank you, Matt. It's, um, it looks rough, but it's actually in really good shape. No rust on the bottom. The seam is really nice all the way around. Not a lot of damage to it. Everything kind of seems like it's in relatively good working order. There's a fair bit of paint on it, but I think it will do rather than having to repair that other one for now. What I'd like to do is just kind of wire wheel around the edge, just have a, you know, suss it out a little bit, make sure it is, um, it is okay. Uh, and then what I'd like to do is just remove these hinges and I'll probably grab the other ones off the other door and put those on here just to make sure they match up. Um, and I'm just gonna go and hold it up to place, make sure that it is gonna work for what we need it. And then, the fun begins where I need to try again to match the patina sort of, which is gonna be a bit tricky, but we'll, uh, we'll come up with something. First off, let's remove these hinges. Might need a little bit of heat. They are stuck in there, but I think I should just be able to pull these ones. Oh, that one's all good. So try a little bit of heat. If the heat doesn't work, I'll drill them out again and uh, we'll pull these off and then I can put the other ones inside where you can hold it up, make sure it works. Hello, how are you? I'm living on the moon I'm calling from a telephone Inside of a saloon The only other person here Left many years ago And now I sit here at the bar Feeling so alone I've read all of the books I Still the thing I'm looking for Refuses to be found Except this clanging deep grip Oh, I am such a fool A man who wanted quiet So he went up to the moon But now this precious solitude I once thought so sublime Has changed my sense of what is real and what is in my mind I think I hear the voices of my distant family The laughter of my oldest friends The years I haven't seen I know that that's impossible I tell myself each day But no one stops this growing sound They will not go no one comes here for me Which was my own crew as I There's nothing left but dust dreams And memories and time We can start to play around with that. Screw up this door like we screwed up the other door. I did a few test panels, this being one of them. This was just a scrap piece of steel I had. And as you can see with the products I'm gonna show you, it, you know, you can virtually get a real patina, a real rust. So um, 
By no means is this a patina tutorial because there's a million out there and there's so many do's and so many don'ts. There's probably a, a million don'ts that I'm about to show you. So I'm purely showing you what I've used and, and watch it in real time work. So um, I am gonna use a muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid. Uh, it is from the pool shop, so I'm not sure what the percentage is. Um, I'm assuming it'd be kind of the, the pretty potent stuff. Um, and then I'm using hydrogen peroxide, uh, and that is the 3%. Um, not the five or six percent that you can get it in. Um, it's weird in Australia You can only get like tiny little bottles. So you buy like a bunch of them, but back home you can Buy a big one. So I still haven't found out an area where I can buy like a nice big jug of it, but um, So what I'm gonna I'm basically just gonna kind of explain what I'm about to do So this is that door I just showed you and we have kind of cleaned up the backside. It looks really nice I'm actually very surprised how good of condition this door is, especially rust-wise that we're about to create on it. But we need to try and match this patina. So I'm gonna show you some really weird tricks that work for me and have, you know, it's proofs in the pudding. It's, it's on the car, it looks the part, and uh, hopefully it can withstand a bit of UV and, and weather, but we're just gonna see how that plays out when it does. So um, I have ripped all the paint off of this um, and this is obviously the surface rust that was underneath the paint, uh, which is kind of a bonus, gives a bit of, bit of a boost and, you know, it shows a bit of texture and stuff. Uh, we've, ben and I were actually just looking, it say, had, had said something back in the day, um, and we were trying to pick out some of the letters, but we've only got a few A's and E's so far, but there's definitely something here and here. So back in the day, there was obviously some sort of, you know, maybe some signage for a company or someone used it for for their business and, and had their uh, phone number and stuff on it, which is kind of neat. It's kind of cool just resurrecting that. So anyways, we are gonna do some steps. Um, first off, gonna quickly explain that when I was doing this, I learned a lot um, purely like right off the bat. I bought some cheap spray bottles because the, the acid does kind of like, it's not the nicest stuff. So I grabbed some spray bottles that kind of like spray it out quite heavily. Uh, if, your if your material is kind of like quite smooth and it's on an angle and there's a lot of material coming out, a lot of it gets the runoff. So then you get the texture of, uh, of it like dripping. So I kind of want this to sort of stay on the panel um, in order to try and create its, its rust and, and patina the way that um, we kind of want it. Like similar to that, there's not a lot of runoff of water and stuff like that. So I've, I've put it in better um, better squirt bottles. These things kind of have like almost like a mist uh, thing on them, which you can kind of just go and just lightly put it on and we, we'll do multiple coats. Um, one thing too that I've learned from, you know, looking on YouTube and, and trying this before um, with different uh, external, you know, art installations that we were doing is, is uh, heating up the product prior to doing it um, definitely helps. So I'm just gonna fire up the, the Oxy we're just gonna warm this up a little bit. We're not gonna get it like hot by any means, just warm to the touch, just to allow it to cure a little bit faster. Um, obviously we're working with acid, so you definitely wanna wear eye protection, gloves, a respirator. It is pretty nasty stuff. You don't wanna get it anywhere near your face or your skin. It will hurt if you do. Um, I'm pretty sure we use bicarb soda uh, and water to neutralize the acid. Um, baking soda does work, but uh, I've, I've learned from quite a few people that bicarb soda is, is best. So after you, you know, have got your patina that you want, we will mix in a bit of bicarb soda with some water and wash it off. So I'm gonna grab my eye protection and we're just gonna warm this panel up now. The reason I got these gloves on so long is it's only a pair I got. Just test this. Perfect. All right. So I'm just gonna put my mask on and I'm just gonna spray the acid on quite lightly, try and get a, a quite a uniform coat on there. All right. Yeah. 
sorry, Ben, that's going straight to you. So you can see the acid is already starting to eat the, the rust that's actually on there already. I'm just kind of looking down, making sure I got a relatively good coat on there. It's not dripping or anything, which is good. So now we have the hydrogen peroxide, 3%. Same deal, nice mist coat. And you're gonna see it, um, it basically works right away. So that's probably got maybe a bit too much on there. But it will start to work. Maybe heat it up just a little bit. So we need maybe less acid, more hydrogen peroxide. But it's all right, we're learning. You can see like where the acid stays, obviously it keeps it clean. So we need the sun to come out, that would help. Might just try and blow a little bit of the acid off. Everybody had a hard year. Nobody got their pain. What a time for the wicked, the hungry and the brave. Somebody called all the gamble. <laughs> the luck of the draw. Whether or not it comes out good enough. We'll have to see. I think too, you just leave it and it just kind of does its thing, come back, spray a bit more hydrogen peroxide on, leave, come back, do it again. But, you know, this is kind of the colors we're really trying to achieve are these real dark colors. We don't want the crazy orange. So I think after a few goes, you know, this was done yesterday and left overnight. So, and hasn't actually been neutralized technically. So it's probably still kind of rapidly creating that surface rust. So if we can kind of get that over this whole door and then we can get it to that nice, nice dark, dark kind of burgundy, almost purple color with some other hints of, of uh, making it work, we, which could be in business. A lot of work to try and make something look totally original. But then again, it saves sanding a heap of bog and primer and polyester and then you put everything on, you chip it, you scratch it. Oh, the best ever. Yeah, like what it looks like before. <laughs> yeah, it's just hard to keep it like that down here. But there are products that you can buy like that do kind of keep the longevity of it there. Obviously it's kind of probably too hot, the panel maybe. That's why it's bubbling. But. Right. 
It's starting to get darker though. In areas. <laughs> yeah. Like see underneath how it's starting to go darker now? Mm. I think those bubbles are obviously maybe because of the heat. And blowing it around too, but. That's cool, eh? Yeah. That's wild looking. It's got so much depth. Colors. Ah. Art attack. Ta-da. Okay, so this is curing. We're just gonna let it sit for a little bit. Unfortunately, it's not the greatest weather for drying, but um, I can just kind of maybe even grab the, the uh, what do you call it? Hair dryer. Just keep it warm and then we'll add a little bit more and just keep doing it. Maybe, maybe it'll eventually darken right up, but you can kind of see like, this is the effect that we're going for. So this is the original never touched. Just this patina here is what it was. So this is obviously just done with age, the sun and all the weather elements. So it's, it's turned out, you know, perfect for, for guys who want to savor that patina. And all I've done here is put that Galmet rust converter over top of it. And I even went over with a bit of black Japan wood stain. I know, crazy. What was I thinking? But it's like come up beautifully. Um, we did have it out in the rain today. Um, we forgot that the Roadster was outside and, and um, yeah, it got pretty wet and wiped it off and nothing. It just still looks the exact same. So. And it's just real deep, you know, like when the sun's on it, it really shows those colors. But again, it's just kind of that like rich, rich, dark leather, you know, like, like I've always wanted this car to be like, like that, that Chesterfield coach. So, you know, there's lots of nice areas through here that really come through and up on here, there's all these really nice greens that will, um, that show a lot, which would be cool for the interior. And then again, with the door, trying to match that on the bottom, you know, we kind of screwed that up, but it's just a lot of trial and error. So I think it's kind of fun to do that. So I still will, you know, finish these off and do those as well. I need to do the rust repair on the bottom, bottom sides of them. And then I'll end up, um, yeah, giving that the same treatment. Um, and it will dull off a little bit more, you know, for some guys, it's maybe a little bit too shiny for that kind of the, you know, preserving what's there. She thinks I'm a little lazy, I think she's a little crazy. We like summer and we like spring, watching wrestling and rain. She ain't shy, she speaks her mind, tough as nails and smooth as wine. We burn hot as kerosene, baby, we got our own thing. She ain't skinny and I ain't tall, and that don't bother us at all. I run naked through the yard. She flash every police car, drinking wine and getting tired, and shooting out the damn street lights. How does she put up with me? Oh, baby, we got our own thing. We got our own thing. We don't need no rain. We ain't rich, but son of a we're a hillbilly king and queen. Life don't seem so hard with you beneath the stars. Cause they're growing four leaf clovers in the yard There ain't nothing that he can't fix He's a hard-headed son of a bitch We got married on the Georgia line Watch out ladies this morning
pretty nice to walk into that every day. So here we go. Um, kind of want to try and show you without the shadows, but this is what we've got so far. It's pretty, pretty cool. I really like this dark stuff and we've got a lot of it. I think if we kept applying it, obviously it would, you know, kind of keep going, but this is where we can kind of get this darker by using that stain. And then obviously we have to, I want to run the gamut over it to kind of seal it as well as convert it back to, you know, kind of killing it. So we're doing some weird steps here, trying to, trying to get this to match, but the really dark stuff is quite nice. And I mean, I know this is really dark, but this side's already been kind of treated but you can kind of see like this is what we're trying to achieve right now. This is that test piece that I've left out. Now this has been a couple of days, so this too has gotten really nice as well. But what I have done and what we are going to do right now is I need to, I'm gonna set this up. The kettle is boiling right now. Um, and I've got some bicarb soda I'm just gonna throw in there and we're just gonna pour it over that to neutralize the, um, the acid. Okay, so here we go. We're just gonna pour this over. This is also just gonna kinda take a little bit of the surface like soot that you can kinda get on your finger off. Get out of the light for you. See, if it's dark like that and we can tint it, we're definitely onto something. Consistently, like it'd be amazing if it was all this color, we'd nearly have a spot on match, but because of, you know, blowing and adding more and heating it up and, you know, like it's got to flow, it's got to do its thing too. So you can't really dictate exactly how it's going to happen, but Okay, so we got it back over. We've neutralized it with boiling water and the uh, bicarb soda, giving it a light wipe. It's actually funny, like I'm kind of, I was nervous to wipe it, but it's actually taking off all that kind of light brown area and it's showing a lot more of the dark, which is really cool. Like it's, it's almost like a black, which is sweet. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna heat it up a little bit just to keep the panel warm. It's really cold, um, just gonna, just quickly warm it up with the torch, nothing, you know, just still to the touch, just warm and um, just draw a couple of areas that are still a little bit um, damp. And then we're going to try and put our um, spirit based tint over top. I know heaps of you are going, you're mad, but we're going to try it because I think it'll work again, like wiping it. I'm a bit nervous, but I suppose we could always do it again if we had to. When Billy comes round, you better run for cover. All right, so let's just see what this does. We can even just kind of test it a little bit on the bottom. is all going to play with putting the gamut over top of it though. I've never done that. Screw it. Let's just give it a wipe. See what happens, eh? <laughs> it's nice because you can still see 
through it. I might just actually Oh, get out of it. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Two-time cheater, one-time lover, and a woman stealer. So if we, I mean, we still got a bit of work to do on it, but if we were to hold it up to the other panel, now this panel hasn't been coated in anything, but so we obviously have blackened it a fair bit. All right, I'm just gonna show you how damn close this got. So we obviously had a bit of a trial error on this bottom bit, but it's actually not too bad. But then after, you know, getting the, the rest of the tinting done, that's from original, now kind of this dark, you can see it here as well. That's the original, and this is that darker. So it still has a lot of depth, but you can still see through it, which is really cool. Like I love this little area where this green is, just looks so nice. It's all above that upper deck lid. And then you kind of come down into it. But check this out. Obviously it's not the same shine, but one would say that is a damn close match. I just need to get this looking like that a little bit and we're in business. All right, it's kind of tough to see in this light, but what I did was use some metho. Oh shit, it's all right. And get this off. I used some metho just to take a little bit of the stain off, um, just to see if it would bring out a little bit more of the, the colors without doing going too crazy. And if I show you, like this is this is kind of what we started with, that real orangey color. And now let's go up this real black color. So if we take it outside. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, obviously because of the light, the angle of this to that. Sorry for the dirty stained gloves, but so if I just go and take this over to the other side. So as soon as it's got a bit of color to it, you could fool me and say that that is an original door to the body. I mean, it might not have all the cool, cool colors like this does, but it's damn close. So now we need to put a bit of gallmet on that. All right, so this could be make or break. We can either ruin this panel right now and it's not gonna work, or it might actually work. So we got our gallmet in here. I might even just apply it with a cloth, wipe it on. We see if we can wipe the majority of it off without leaving too many streaks that way. It's, uh, it's kind of on there the way it should be, and hopefully it'll look, look the part.
right, so the door's on and pretty damn close. I mean, it's maybe off a little bit. It might be a little bit too dark. I think when you apply that galmet, it's, it's kind of a risk. Like you kind of have like one shot, otherwise it leaves like quite a, those like lines and stuff. Or kind of unfortunately like what it's done here um, when I was kind of learning how to apply it. You gotta be pretty quick on like applying it and wiping it off. Otherwise, as, as soon as it sticks, you, yeah, you're kind of kind of hooped. But, you know, considering what this door was, the original state of it with all that paint on it, the scale, the flake, surface rust, and then being able to just kind of wire wheel that all off, using those methods in order to, to patina it, and then being able to darken it using that, that stain, it, um, yeah, it worked out pretty well. So I think even if I were to, you know, kind of darken this up a little bit, it would, it would match, but, you know, kind of trying to achieve that kind of like, you know, oiled leather boot, I suppose, you know, like a, a nice kind of, they got lots of color in them and lots of depth. So it'd be, it'd be neat to sort of like replicate that sort of, but I'm really happy, you know, with, with a door that's not obviously matched to this car and trying to match it to make it look like it was, um, you know, originally part of this. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it and kind of doing like real patina methods, I suppose, with, with rusting it. So. You know, it might not be exactly um, what some would do. Um, like obviously paint is an option for sealing it and that, but the rest of this body isn't technically sealed. I mean, the rust has stopped by using that Galmet converter um, and it does leave kind of like a waxy seal on it. So I think if I just keep that, that up, keeping that, it, it should preserve it as, you know, for as long as it can be. So maybe another 90 years down the road, but it's really nice to just kind of see the doors finally on and rolling it outside and just having like a, an overall look at it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So um, I think once I'll go into more depth about adjusting the doors and making them latch really nicely once the body is actually mounted um, and I'm going to use uh, an aftermarket wood kit and then trace that onto some really old timber that I have. Um, and then I will be installing kind of a wood kit through through there and then once the wood kits in on the on the B pillars then we can kind of adjust our dovetail on our our latches and that to make it work yeah so on this side you can see we've kind of just rolled the car back in the sun and you know it, it does actually look really good if I grab the rag and wipe over it you can kind of see like it does blend quite nicely especially like right in that bit looks really nice so there's a bit of playing around i can still do to kind of get that to to work and and um you know match that that really nice quarter especially with those colors i've mentioned before especially in the sun you can really see those greens come out i just yes yeah, very cool a lot of character but um yeah i'm just so happy with the way that this door has has kind of turned out considering you know what we were working with um and you know like 99 percent of people probably would have just turfed it including myself and um if it wasn't for carl's enthusiasm like i don't think i probably would have tackled it um i would have just tried to find another door and and you know done what we had done to the other side so it was really nice to to challenge ourselves like using the power hammer um, using those profile dies, creating the inner structure, um, you know, watching Carl kind of straighten that bit out and then, you know, doing, was able to kind of get the outer skin straight and get all those big dents in the crease out, you know, using like the heat shrinker, the shrinking disc, um, stuff like that. So it was really nice to just be able to kind of be hands on on all the tools and, and create something that, you know, was hopefully looking like it hadn't been done. So I think a little bit some finer tweaks to the bottom and a little bit of adjustment once again the body's bolted down um it'll be you know really nice to just kind of say hey look this door was so badly damaged and now it it kind of works we've sanded the inside still so i will obviously give this and the other one an initial coat of that um pour 15 probably I haven't welded the edge yet because it still has a little bit of tweaking in here. So I want to make sure that when the body is bolted on and the doors, as you can see here, you know, if you kind of pull them back on the cowl, it kind of gives you a bit better idea of 
there is a, a fair amount of adjustment that you can do to make sure that they work. So I will definitely spend the time to make sure that they click really nicely on the new latches. On to uh, a little bit more rust repair and then we are nearly at the point of um, kind of getting everything removed off the chassis and start to paint everything and reassemble it for final assembly. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Um, yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, hit notifications. Uh, if you guys are members and haven't seen it, we, st we do have that um, behind the scenes footage from up in Kalgoorlie. I think it's about 45 minutes long. Some pretty funny stuff, just a lot of kind of um, behind the scenes of the hecticness that we kind of continued um, to, to do throughout the, the last couple weeks of that crazy crunch time. So it's, um, yeah, it's up there if you guys want to want to jump over and have a look. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Thanks very much. Can't f***ing see anything.